Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Chrono Plays with the Vive. Yes, just, just got the Vive, and I wanted to record the unboxing, and I really want to play with it, so let's get to it. Uh, let's take a quick look at the box. Uh, on the front, we have a black-on-black -black image of the Vive itself, and of course, you know, Vive HTC, and then of course, we've got to slap the Steam logo on it somewhere. On this side, which I intend not to show, though it's probably going to end up in the screen anyways, is like the serial number, part number, and stuff like that. Nothing major. Uh, on that side is empty. On the back we have... Uh, features. Powered by Steam VR includes Steam VR tracking, 1.0 technology, and chaperone guidance system, blah, 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 blah. Features, usage, controller, what's inside, display, 2160 by 1200 resolution. Uh, recommended PC specs, additional requirements. You know what? I'm sick of waiting already. Let's open this bastard up. Ugh. Okay, so inside we have a really crumpled up piece of paper. Actually, it, it's, it's kind of really crumpled. Okay. Um, slightly unexpected. I expect this perfect smooth thing, but no, it's kind of crushed. Uh, but it's a uh, getting started sheet. Plan a play area. Um, two meters by 1.5 meters. Okay, so here's my plan for the vibe for this, you know, how I'm going to play with it anyways. In my study where I am right now, there's not a hell of a lot of space. Uh, seriously. Uh, so, what I'm going to do, initially, is to set it up in my study and see how little space we can work with. Because all the videos that I've seen for the Vive so far have always been about pushing the boundaries. How big can you go? Well, that's not really relevant to the vast majority of people on this planet. Very few people have that kind of space. So my goal, initially, is to go the other way. How small can we go? So I'm going to do exactly that, and that's... The first thing I'm going to do anyways. Uh, second test is going to be in my living room where I have a little bit more space. And then the third test, that is going to be the pushing the boundary, see how wide we can go. But I can't even do that here. I have to do that at my office. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, so, yes, anyways, plan a play area and then room scale and it suggests the size. You know, different sizes and download the Vive software. Wait, what? Apparently, we do have to download the Vive software. It's not something built into the Steam VR. Mm, whatever. Okay. Set up VR, and that's all it says. And it has what's in the box. And on the back, it has the same exact thing, just in more languages. Okie dokie, then. Moving along. We have the Vive controllers, which are... Larger than I expected, actually, and kind of dusty. Hmm. But yeah, I have relatively large hands, and these are larger than I expected. Honestly. Okay. Um, I mean, I knew they weren't exactly small, but... So we have grip buttons on the side, on both sides. I wonder if they're individual. Like, if you click this one and click that one, it does two different things. We have the touchpad here, which also clickies. Uh, two buttons there, the trigger button, and that's about it. Oh, and it's turning itself on. <laughs> Apparently I click something to turn it on. It's trying to sync, and it can't because the headset's not plugged in yet. Oop. And of course we have the second controller, and it's got its little wrist straps that I suggest people use. Because you know, you know, it's going to end up, there's going to be videos all over the internet of these things going and just flying into things. You know that's coming. <laughs> People are either going to do it or they're going to stage it, just like they already have. There was one uh, video going around that was, it was like, yeah, a little video. It kind of went viral on Reddit a little bit. And it was about somebody playing with the, Vi with the Vive and then went smack into a TV. And then you see glass shatter and you hear the glass shatter. And it's completely fake. Because... <laughs> uh, TVs don't break like that. LCD, flat panel TVs don't break like that. CRT TVs don't break like that. Nothing breaks like that. It was completely fake, but uh, people thought it was funny, and they uh, use it 
you know, as an example of what's going to happen. So, yes. And then, of course, we get to the actual guts of this thing, so to speak. The Vive headset itself. And it looks pretty much exactly like we saw in every single video we've seen. Let's see. We got uh, USB, and then we got this dongle thing. Uh, oh, there's HDMI, and there's another dongle thing, the other end of the dongle thing. Are these individual cables? Wait, what the hell? Why is there a dongle here and a dongle here that look like they connect to each other? Is that for, like, power and power is optional? Connect to link box. Well, that's a hell no. What the fuck is this for? And I'm touching the uh, lenses. I'm going to have to remember to clean my optics. And that cover came off. Oop. Uh, oh, convenient. I was just saying, I touched my lenses. I need to clean my optics. Optics cleaned. There we go. <laughs> let's, let's put that back on until we're actually ready to set this up. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, yeah, very, very confused. Let's sit this down for a moment and take a look at the lighthouses. Ooh, convenient. Tripod mount. I was hoping for that. That looks like a standard tripod mount. Um, I don't have a tripod within re easy reach at the moment. I thought there was a base that's supposed to go on these things as well. This box is insanely deep. Maybe there's stuff underneath it. Oh, there's the leather lighthouse. Uh, USB. I'm assuming a sync cable, sync button, and then power. Okie dokie. There are things underneath. All right. Underneath, we have a power adapter. That is a huge-ass power adapter. That is a very huge-ass power adapter. I wonder what you're for. I mean, holy shit. And it has a big honkin' plug. OK, so a generic big honkin' plug that fits perfectly in there. I thought this was supposed to run off of USB power. Hang on. It is output, output, input, output. There we go. 12 volt, 2.5 amp. Okay, this thing doesn't run on power. This thing doesn't run on USB power. Okay, that's something to note and keep track of. We got the second one. So I will unpackage real quick. We have. Ah, the sync cable, so it's like a standard mini headphone connector, and a really, 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 really long one. But yeah, standard stereo mini headphone jack. Not unsurprising in the least, but uh, it is huge. I need to use this thing to connect my headphones. You know the wireless ones that I have that have the external, the extra headphone jack? I could use these, plug them in my computer, and... You know, go around the entire house. It's huge. And then the mounting brackets. That's what I wanted to see. I am glad that there are mounting brackets that come with this thing. And then uh, base station mounting guide. Oop. And uh, yeah, so screws, drywall mounts, and then actual, yeah, mounts themselves. So screw them into the wall. We got an adjustable mount there. And then they screw into the base or into the lighthouse, which I have no intention of using as they stand because these are permanent installation. My setup has to be at least somewhat mobile. So I'm not going to be using those. Put them away. Uh, let's see if the base mounting guide has anything very important to say. Uh, it has to be pointed at least 30 to 45 degrees in a downward angle. I'm hoping I'm putting this in front of the camera. Uh, how to put it into the wall. Rotate it so that it's level. Yep, that's all it says. The stuff that uh, would be blatantly obvious to anybody who has... Uh, you know, even a remotely engineering background. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to figure out how to set all this up, 
and uh, clean up my little study a little bit more. And then I'm going to mount the camera up there somewhere so that we have a better view of the study and my play area that I'm using. And we will go from there. So I shall be right back after I do all of that stuff. Okay, so I'm back. And I want to give you a little bit of a tour of the studio before we get started because of the fisheye lens that the camera has. It, it looks a little bit bigger than it actually is. Uh, so let me give you a little you know, ex explanation of where all of this stuff is. So obviously over here we have the desk with the dual monitor set up, so that's taking up some space. We have the computer chair here which can slide out of the way, I guess, technically, if I really want to, but it's just a hassle, just one of those hassle things. We have a footstool here that I always use to keep my feet up on. Again, hassle. Probably also out of frame, now that I think about it. I kind of pointed the camera a little bit more up because I was going to be standing up, but I'm kind of tall. Um, over here, also just out of frame, is a reclining armchair that I keep in here for... You know, when I need to take a nap, that kind of thing. But uh, it's pushed the whole way up against the wall to the point where it's actually kind of tilted up against the wall. And that's where it always is. So that's not any different. And it can't be moved any further out of the way. Um, I can't move it that way because there's stuff in the way just out of, or off frame there. Um, well, if I move it this way, it's more in the way. So it's kind of annoying. But the biggie. The biggie thing right here, and the reason that the camera is pointed as low as it is right now, is because of my ceiling fan right here. Okay? And this is going to be the biggest problem when it comes to the Vive for two reasons. One, I've already bounced my head off of the damn thing without having something covering my face. And two, there are literally only two places I can put the lighthouses. Up there, the one you can see, and then over there, on the other side of the ceiling fan. So that might actually cause some tracking issues. Don't know yet, haven't figured it out. So I really have here to work with. I mean, it's, it's not a hell of a lot. I mean, I can move a little bit this way, but any further over, I'm gonna have problems with the chair. And I can move a little bit over this way, but any further over, I'm gonna have problems with the wall. So, problems. Not a lot of space. I don't even know if I reached the, what, what did it say I needed? Um, it says I need two meters by 1.5 meters. Six feet by, or six feet, six inches by five feet. Nope, nope, don't make it. <laughs> so this is actually a relatively good example. What I would have to do to reach the minimum requirements is actually remove half the furniture in my study and find somewhere else to put it. But even then, I have a problem with the ceiling fan. I'd have to replace the ceiling fan. And even then, I still have a problem because my palm is currently flat on the ceiling. Wait, am I far enough? There, now it should be in frame. Yeah, seriously. My ceiling is right here. <laughs> it's not that far up. So it, it, I know I've heard that when you or when you know uh, the HTC was telling developers on how to giving them suggestions on how to program for the Vive, they specifically said don't make people go like this, because it could be problems. Um, now the ceiling is what seven and a half. Yeah, I think seven and a half feet tall, high, um, and I'm six foot four, so we. I mean, I'm pretty bloody tall, so. That's going to be a problem for me, maybe not a problem for other people, but it's definitely a concern for me. So, yeah. Um, as for the lighthouses, as I said, I put one there where you can see, and I put one over there. Now, they are not attached to the walls for two reasons. One, I need some form of mobility for them, because like I said, the next test that I'm going to be doing after setting it up in here is going to be going out to the living room where I can, again, if I move furniture out of the way get more space to work and then I'm going to be taking it to my office where I have even more space to work. So I, I basically I'm going to be trying a whole bunch of different setups to see what works, what doesn't work, how well it works, that kind of thing. Alright, 
Now, the problem with these things are, uh, you really either have to have, well, even then, that would be kind of stupid. You really kind of have to have them mounted, like permanently installed. You screw them into the wall and everything. You really kind of have to, because when I set these things up, first plugged them in and then sat them on their little perch where they are, which for the record is quite improvised. As you can tell, the uh, sound foam here is a little cockeyed because it weighs that much. It's actually pushing down that side. Um, I can hear them vibrating against the wall every once in a while, not often. Um, and I can't hear them right now, so they're not doing it right now. But that vibration against the wall means that they're moving. Okay, and any little jitter is going to cause problems with tracking. You know, just little jitters. If you keep everything still, it's just going to shake a little bit. Nothing, probably nothing that's going to interfere with me playing the game when I'm actually playing the game, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, yeah, I did, the, did that there, did that there, same thing over there. It's just kind of perched up there at the moment because that's kind of really my only options. I have power in that corner, I have power in this corner, and that's only because I'm running a giant ass extension cord the whole way to the outside. Um, and I have power in that corner. I don't have power in that corner, so I couldn't put it up in there. So I had to pick those two sides. Um, and now that I think about it, if I didn't run power in here from outside the room, I'd be kind of screwed, wouldn't I? Because I have no power over here. Um, there is no power outlet on this side of the room at all. Uh, this is an older house. It was built before the requirements to have an outlet on each room. And it's also an older house built before the requirements to have the three-prong outlets. So that's a two-prong outlet, and that's a two-prong outlet. Um, so I have to pull power in from outside where there's actually a three-prong outlet. So definitely fun. Um, so let's actually dive into this and get it set up. Enough of the background, hopefully. Mm, I guess we'll find out. And let's get started. I have already recording my monitor, so you should be able to see pretty much everything that happens during setup. Uh, the camera here, the monitor here, um, everything should be going except, of course, the second monitor that should have nothing on it except for Audacity right now. So let, let's get started. I need this uh, www.htcvive.com uh, forward slash setup htcvive.com forward slash setup okay so to get started download vive setup so let's download the vive setup Boop. Yes. Hopefully I didn't screw up my recording when uh, user account control popped up. Hmm, I guess I'll find out. I click yes, there you go. Okay, so English, get started. Terms and conditions. Boop. All right, setting up Vive takes about 28 minutes. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So get ready to enter an immersive world or an immersive virtual world with Vive. You see into virtual reality using the headset. You interact with virtual objects using controllers. Base stations help your headset and controllers track your exact location in the room. Walk, crawl, or jump around. Every move you make in real life also moves you in VR. Yeah, I put those lighthouses around. They should work for all of that jazz. Uh, for room scale VR, you need a space where you can move around freely. Minimum room size, 2 meters by 1.5 meters. I don't think I have that. Maximum distance between base stations, 5 meters. 16 feet, 4 inches diagonally. Um, I think. Gonna guess there. Uh, hopefully it is, because that's where they're going. I really kind of can't do anything more. Uh, before you begin, here are some helpful hints. Move furniture and all obstacles like pets out of your play area. Well, 
Cat's outside bitching to get in. She ain't getting in until I'm done, so pet's out of the way. Furnitures are intentionally left in place, well, because I'm a dick. Uh, make sure there are power outlets close to where you mount the base stations. I already did that. You may need tools for setup, including a drill to mount your base stations. Again, if you're doing this in a permanent scenario, obviously I'm going to recommend that you permanently install these things. And I can just tell it right off the bat, you're going to want to permanently install these things. Uh, install software, Vive program files, Vive setup. How much space do I have free? Uh, 96 gig. That eh, should be enough. And uh, Steam has... Can I change you? Oh, I, it's probably just asking where Steam itself is, not where I want to install the Steam component. Uh, 533 meg to download. That's not bad. Um, so I'm going to leave the Vive software on the C drive. and wait for it to download. I can imagine HEC's website is gonna be getting a little bit hammered right about now because a lot of vibes are being delivered today from my understanding. I thought it was kind of funny the FedEx guy showed up at my house and apologized because he took my Vive down to my dad's house because he thought that the name on the package was the same one as there. And he knew that my dad got one yesterday. I have no idea. I, I, I don't understand. 17% hmm. and it kind of stopped. 19%, okay. Oh, it's doing a thing. I need to create an HTC account. Um, ooh, I'm going to use my Steam account. Nobody look. Okay, so everything's installed. It went through, it installed the Vive software. It asked me to log into Steam, uh, then confirm with the email code that you always get when you open Steam for the first time on a new PC. Uh, then it asked me to confirm my email address. Uh, and then it downloaded what I'm assuming is an update. I don't know. It basically went through, it installed the whole thing, then it went through, it did the Steam thing, and then it went back and, and downloaded something else. Which, yeah, that's what I'm going to assume is the uh, update. Boop. Alright, find your base station components. Well, they're already set up. Uh, SIG cable optional. Good, because that ain't happening. Learn about the base stations. Base stations need an unobstructed view of your player area help to help your devices track you in space. Again, I think I picked a pretty good spot. I hope so. I'll find out. Uh, avoid damaging the front panel as this will affect tracking. Remove the film covering each base station's face before use. That's something I have not done. Remind me to do that. Um, boop. Plan your placement. Things to keep in mind when placing base station. Each base station has a 120 degree field of view to ensure accurate tracking. Mount your base station so that overlapping field of view completely covers your planned play area. Put the base stations in opposite corners facing the center of your play area. Mount them or two meters, six feet, five inches above the floor or higher. Angle, angle them 30 to 45 degrees downward. Now, what, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but there is a green light on the front of the base station. I noticed that when it was more like straight up, it turns blue. So I'm wondering if that's like a, a, a helper to tell you what angles it needs to be on. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oop. Uh, mount your base stations. Make sure the base stations are stable as vibration affects tracking. You can mount the base stations using one of the following methods. Use the mounting kit included in the box or use a standard quarter, in, quarter by 20 UNC threaded mounting point like a camera tripod or light stand. Yeah, um... Probably going to be buying light stands because my tripods aren't exactly six foot five inches tall or taller. Hmm. Turn on the base stations. Plug the power adapters to the base stations. A status light on the face lets you know that the base station is on. Don't adjust base stations while they are on. Make sure that the motor has stopped before moving them. Oops. The sync cable included in this box is completely optional and is only necessary if your base stations are having trouble syncing. 
Uh, find the letter on the face of each base station. Make sure that the base station is set to B and the other is set to C. All right. Uh, U R C and U R B. Uh, if you need to change the base station's channel, press the channel button on the back. Okay, that's something to keep in mind. Um, apparently they have channels, and we have B and C. I wonder if there's like multiple channels. Hmm. Hmm. This may be a problem in the future if we're trying to use multiple, you know, base stations. Like a bunch of base stations. Check the status lights. Before you continue, make sure that both base stations status lights are green. Okay, uh, well, yeah, I mentioned that. They're both green. Okay, they could be yellow. I'm a little colorblind, but mm, whatever. Uh, find your headset components. All right, so the headset, the base station, or the headset, the link box. Link box power adapter. Okay, that does answer that question. We do need the power. Uh, USB cable and HDMI cable. Uh, I think I saw a USB cable, but I didn't see an HDMI cable. Yeah, USB. I was kind of wondering about that. I was like, I didn't see an, a US, or an HDMI cable. Hmm. I'm so used to the Oculus that I didn't even think of the uh, breakout box. Since the Oculus just plugs directly into the uh, computer, that's basically what I was expecting. Um, and I wonder if that's the case. Because there really is, it's HDMI, mini display port, USB, and DC in, and then HDMI, USB, and DC in. I don't know why both sides need a DC in. Because technically that would be DC out if this is the VR side. Hmm. Whatever. Um, but yeah. There's also a sticky pad that came with it that you could just stick it to your desk. Again, trying to be a little bit more portable here, so ain't gonna happen. Uh, HDMI cable. Let's see if we can track down the HDMI cable. I didn't see one. That's a faceplate. That's power. I need that. Is that the HDMI cable? Uh, that's the HDMI cable. What else is here? No idea. Yeah. All right, so power, HDMI. So it does come included with uh, everything you need. Seeing reflections of the studio lights in the... Uh, Lighthouse, and it's confusing me. All right, so HDMI, USB. Are they the same length? Because that would be silly if they weren't. They are, okay. I know I have a spare uh, USB 3 uh, port, and I know I have a spare uh, HDMI port because I used, um, yeah, the, the DK2. Require both of those. Uh, another giant ass power brick, 12 volt, 1.5 amp. What are the other ones? 2.5. Well, I'm going to assume since this one was packaged not with the lighthouses, they were packaged with all the other stuff for the headset, uh, and the other two were packaged with the lighthouses. I'm going to assume that the other two were specifically for the lighthouses and this one is specifically for the headset. Um, but potentially something to think about. I don't want to be unplugging these things just to double check because I'd have to check both of them. Um, primarily because I'm worried they're going to fall off their, mount their perches. Oh, it's my ceiling fan that's screwing in my head. Mm, whatever. All right, so... Have all that. Learn about the headset. To see in virtual reality using the headset, sensors on the headset track the position where you are in space using the base stations. Remove the film covering the lenses. Unwind the three in one cable. Three in one cable. I am going to point this out that the DK2 runs off of USB power. Does not require an extra port. 
or an extra power adapter. Which means the DK2 can run completely off my laptop. And in fact, I have used it that way where we didn't where I didn't have access to power, I just plugged it in. You know, I just, well, I didn't plug in the laptop, I just plugged in the DK2 into the laptop and had absolutely no problems whatsoever. Let's unwind you. Okay. So, big long ass cable. And I mean big long ass cable. Wow. The film for the lenses. Remember, don't touch your optics. Make sure you keep your optics clean. Now this confuses the hell out of me. I think I showed this. There's four cables going into the bloody thing. I, I, I don't get it. There's these three for USB, HDMI, and power. And then there's this guy. The hell is this thing for? Audio extension cable. Oh. Okay. You know, it helps if you actually read the instructions. Okay, so audio extension cable for the non existent headphones. Hmm. Probably buried in the box somewhere. Guess I'll uh, find them later. Hmm. Uh, unwind the 3 in 1 cable. Don't leave your headset in direct sunlight as it may damage the displays. Uh, the lenses will focus the light and potentially burn your display. So, yeah, don't leave it in direct sunlight. Uh, learn about the link box. Your link box connects your, the headset to your computer. So we have power, USB, mini display port, and HDMI. Uh, connects to the computer. And then the yellow one connects to the headset. Uh, boop. We kind of figured out already. Connect the link box to your PC. I need this. I need this. Oh, this definitely has to be for the headset. Connect to link box. Okay, there we go. It actually, it's it's labeled. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Come on, there we go. Come on, there we go. Now I have to go find a power outlet for it. I kind of used the spare outlet I had for uh, the lighthouse up there. Let's go see if I have a spare power outlet. Maybe I can make one. Come on. Okay, there we go. Now we have power. Then USB and HDMI. I'm getting worn out and I haven't even played with a damn thing yet. Uh, HDMI, HDMI. Where are you at, HDMI? You should be right there. Should I punch you the other way? Yes. Schrodinger's HDMI jack. And then USB goes. All right, that one's blue. So that would be USB 3. Whee! Plop. Whew. All right, so that goes to PC. So DC in. HDMI, USB, and now we have our breakout box and it's trying to install a thing. Installing hub controller, and I missed the other one. Hmm, whatever. Uh, next, connect the headset to the link box. Giant cable. Right. HDMI. USB, DC in. Set that there. Uh, you should installing on Windows, and look, there they go. Boop. Find your controller components. We got them right there. Ah! Micro USB cable, two of them, and two power adapters from HTC. They're in the box. I did see them. I actually had no idea what the hell they were for. Apparently, they're for this. 
uh, learn about the controllers. You interact with the virtual with virtual objects using the controllers. Sensor in the controllers track and position where you are in space using the base station. So we got a menu button, we got the trackpad, we got the system button, we got the status light, trigger, and grip button. Okay, considering it doesn't show the other side of the controller, I'm going to assume the grip buttons both do the same thing. Um, turn on the controllers. Whoop. To turn on the controllers, press the system button. You should hear a beep. Uh, and a vibration, which I did. The controller status lights let you know it's on. To charge your controllers, use the included micro USB power adapters. Okay, they're green. Are they supposed to be green? Hmm. They weren't green before. I accidentally turned them on, as I pointed out earlier in the video. Um, and they just blinked blue for a little while and then turned off. So I'm going to assume they're actually synced already. The lighthouses did nothing. Next, Steam VR will guide you through some steps. Here's what you're about to do. Understand the status of each five components, set the boundaries of your play area, then put on the Steam headset to learn the basics of Steam VR. Boop. Starting. Starting. Unresponsive. I have no idea why it said, popped up and said unresponsive there. Okay. So, set up for room scale, play room scale standing and seated VR experiences. Choose this if you have at least 2 meters by 1.5 meters or around 6.5 by 5 feet. I do not. So I'm going to set it up for standing only. Play standing and seated VR experiences. Choose this if you have limited space to walk around. Standing only. Establish tracking. Place the headset in a location from both space stations. Uh, bu bu that's all it says. <laughs> But it says headset ready, so I'm going to count that as good. So next, uh, calibrate your space. Stand in the middle of your cleared space while holding the headset so that it is facing the default direction you want to face in VR. Then click on the calibrate center button and remain still while calibration completes. Hmm. I need a thing longer. I need a hand longer, Jesus. I hope that was right. All right, place the headset on a stable surface and click the calibrate floor button. Wait, what? Place the headset on a stable surface and click calibrate floor button. Then measure the vertical distance between the surface and the floor and enter it below. Okay. So stable surface. Um, yes, I keep a tape measure under my monitor. Don't ask why. Uh, ba, 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 you are. Now, am I supposed to measure from the bottom of the headset or the top of the headset? Measure the vertical distance between the surface and the floor. OK, so apparently the bottom of the headset. Uh, 26 inches. Inches, 26. Calibrate floor. Boop. Setup complete. You've successfully completed room setup and your configuration has been saved. When you're ready, click the next button and proceed to the scene VR tutorial, which I believe actually has to be, uh, yeah, um, hmm. I'm trying to decide, I've got to find the, the, all right, give me a couple of seconds. I'm going to see if I can track down the headphones that came with this thing or uh, figure out how I'm going to plug my headphones into it. Give me a, a minute. Plump. Okay, so uh, you know those headphones that have been so fucking hyped up uh, about the, the vibes? You know, they clip on and they're in the perfect position so you can actually use them and all that fun shit. They don't come with the Vive. What the fuck? A little pissed off. You get these shitty ass, tiny ass, in-ear earbuds that are exclusively for the Vive. Yeah, no. 
Remember that joke I made earlier in the video about using this thing as my headphone cable? Let's find out if what I said is true. Because that's exactly what I'm going to do. That pisses me off. If I had a little tiny headphone adapter, I'm assuming that's what this thing is for, that if I had a little tiny male-to-male uh, -male headphone cable, basically this thing just significantly smaller, I could probably plug my headphones directly into to this port right here and be done with it, but I don't. They didn't, it didn't come with one or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is plug this in. No, I'm gonna plug this side in, move that, my utterly worthless steam controller. Plop, okay. Give me a little bit more room to work. Oh, come on, give me some cable here. Boop, boop. And let's see if this works. This potentially won't work as uh, the, 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 the cable might be a little too fat to fit in the hole. That might not be working. Hmm. Let's find out. Oh, that's a no. Hmm. Okay. So that's a dud. Ah. Well, I guess I'm SOL. Stuck using the uh, five in ear headphones. This is not going to work. Seriously, think about this for about two seconds. Vive, everybody, everybody so bloody hyped up about the Vive. So hyped up about the, about the Vive. They want to show it off to their friends. Here, stick these in your ears after they've been in my ears for 20 minutes while I've been exercising. No, no. This is not a viable solution there, Val, or yeah, HTC. What the hell happened to the headphones? What the shit? I mean, what the hell? I'm a teensy bit pissed. <sighs> all right, all right. Have no idea if the audio is even right. I wonder if the audio for this thing took over. I wonder if that means you're not going to hear it because, uh, uh, fuck, um, shadow play. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Because potentially shadow play is not picking up the audio. This could be a problem. Hmm. Now, well, let's dive in head first and see what happens. You tell I'm a little pissed. I have no idea. Which one's left, which one's right? That one's left, that one's right. Yes, it works. I would also point out that the, 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 the headset's on. <laughs> not supposed to use it yet, but the headset's on. Uh, put your headset and headphones on now. Am I supposed to put the headphones on properly with this? Feed you through here. We have a little bit more room to play with. <sighs> I can tell I'm not in a good mood. All right, so. Woo, that needs adjusted. A lot. Hmm, I don't think I like these. Oh, hey, you can see. Okay, cool, 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 cool. 
I was worried about that, that they weren't going to show the initial parts. Okay, this needs loosened a lot more. Okay, I know I have a huge head, but holy shit! Alright, this is going to take a little bit of fiddling, I'm sure. Okay, this is literally as far as I can make it. And it does not want to fit on my head. It really, really doesn't. I like how it's going through the tutorial and it hasn't even done anything yet. I have no idea if you guys can hear this, um, but he's saying that they're tracked perfectly, and they're not. Ah. And that's where everything kind of fell down. Um, I was having major audio-video sync issues, like, uh, 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 finished up the video, and started editing it, and had to readjust the audio video sync several times, because they kept sliding further and further out of sync. <clears throat> and I'm not 100% sure what was going on. I don't know if Audacity was recording, recording at an odd speed, or if the video that I was recording of the screen was going at an odd speed. I'm not 100% sure. <clears throat> so if there's any audio video sync issues, don't, you know, just forgive me. Um, what I had noticed in the Vive is that when I turned my head, it actually turned. It was definitely one-to-one, -one and it looked right. It, there wasn't any delay or anything like that. So if you did see that in the video, that was the video, not the Vive. It happens a lot. Like I, I was trying to coordinate the uh, microphone, the video, the, the camera, and the monitor, and they... All three of them didn't want to sync properly. Eh, it, it happens. It happens a lot. So, um, after I did that, I played with the Vive for a little bit more. For, I don't know, what, about an hour and a half, maybe-ish? Somewhere around there. And uh, this, these are still my first impressions, basically. But, um, it's pretty fun, definitely. Uh, I still have this problem with actually playing these games and just staying in one spot, you still have to move around a lot. Um, so even the, the standing experience is still a moving experience. You have to walk around a lot. I was playing um, The Lab from Valve, and it was the robot repair thing, and it's like, okay, go find the drawers and open the drawers. So I go and I open the drawer. Well, the drawer opens really far out. Well, I was facing that way when I opened the drawer, so I had to back up to open this drawer the rest of the way, and I had my back the entire way against the wall before, you know, I still couldn't open the drawer the whole way. <clears throat> so, yeah, you do need some space for it. Um, for technical things, like the actual, like, how it looks and such, there is noticeable screen door effect, but that's easily ignored. But what I've got to do 
is fire up the DK2 again because I think the screen door effect from the DK2 and the Vibe are actually comparable. I think they're pretty close. Um, I'm kind of surprised. I noticed it first off when I figured out that the Steam overlay, which for the record didn't show up on the monitor at all. That's kind of why I kind of stopped there. Uh, I was talking about screen names and stuff like that, but all you, all the, all the monitor was showing was this vast emptiness on the holodeck. Whereas what I was seeing in the Vive was the full Steam interface. And I was very, very confused. But I could play with the desktop, and I could actually control the desktop with the wand, which I thought was really cool, but it looked terrible. It looked kind of like when I was playing with virtual desktop on the DK2. So I'm going to have to actually sit down and do hard comparisons between the two, uh, for resolution purposes to see if the screen door effect is actually that bad because it really feels like it. Um, but there are a few problems inherent to the Vive itself, not the screen resolution. There is streaking. Um, everybody, uh, a lot of people I've been here are reading about or bitching about the halo effect in the Rift, the CV1 Rift where it, if you have a dark background and a light foreground, you get this halo effect around it. Well, the Vive has a, a streak kind of ish. It's the same thing, dark background, light foreground. You get a streak. It's like a J.J. Abrams movie. And it's, it's huge. I mean, the, the Vive logo on the screen is about yay big in the distance, but the streak extends like out here like twice the size of the vive logo it's terrible and even when you're playing it just normal and it's all bright and everything and you know it, like in the lab specifically uh where everything's white you can see these concentric circles in your vision and it's the 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 what are they fresnel lenses uh i think they're fresnel lenses they're the they're like the ones uh, lighthouses where you get all the light going in one direction instead of spreading out. Um, so you get all these concentric circles, and you can see those concentric circles, and it's distracting. It's not, that's, I mean, the screen door effect and lower resolution, you kind of ignore. It's just kind of not a problem. And once you start playing the game, you, you don't even notice it. But the concentric circles and the streaking, that you notice a lot. Um... And it's kind of annoying, but I think I can get used to it, or at least accept that it's a thing, and hopefully Gen 2 will be better. <clears throat> but so far, so good. It's okay. Uh, I fiddled with the headset a lot with the strap, and it, it's better, but it still doesn't feel right. Um... I tightened it a little bit, thinking maybe, maybe, maybe that's the problem. It was actually too loose. So I tightened it, uh, and it did get better, just not by much. Hmm. Definitely an interesting thing. And one thing I didn't get to see at all is the chaperone. The, the Tron mode and the chaperone walls and stuff like that. Don't see that. <clears throat> In the standing mode, you don't see it. Um... You have to walk around, in, even in the standing mode, in some of these things. So, yeah. <laughs> you don't get chaperone at all. So I had to be very cautious. Like I said, uh, when I was playing the one game, my back was up against the wall. Like, I was, you know, at the wall trying to play it. Um, but some of the things were fun. The archery thing in the lab, that was fun. Uh, for the record, the lab is the only game I've played so far. Uh, and... Then I got a phone call from the restaurant telling me to hurry up and come down there because the stereo broke. Um, so I had to take it off and go do that. Um, well, what's even better, um, I actually got nauseous playing it. I didn't notice it right off the bat until I took the headset off, sat it down, and went to do something else for a couple of minutes. And I noticed it. I'm like, my stomach doesn't feel too good. But it's not like motion sickness that I got with the Rift. It's something else. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not even 100% sure it was the Vive. I mean, I might just have been hungry. I don't know. Uh, so on my way back from the restaurant, I got something to eat. 
and uh, you know, then I'm recording this. So I'm going to continue playing with the Vive. I'm going to be very thorough in my testing, so small scale, medium scale, large scale, that kind of thing, work my way up. And I would have to say, so far so good. Is it worth all that money, that 800 freaking dollars plus the extra however much you need to upgrade your PC or buy one? Not yet. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that right now. Not yet. It's not worth it. Um, but again, still very early impressions. I mean, I've only played with this, what you saw on the video, and then maybe an extra hour and a half after that. I don't have a lot of experience with it yet. Not a lot of games. Um, so I'm not going to make final conclusions yet. But I am going to finalize this video. And I will say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game and have fun.